What's up guys, Grandmaster Igor Spiridonov is here and at the beginning of this lesson I want to tell you that you're awesome, you're so smart and you rock. Today I want to share with you a beautiful insight from a student of mine and even though I've been teaching this subject how to prevent blunders for many years, I couldn't summarize it so well. And this particular student found the AB method, that's his way to memorize this principle so that he can actually implement this in his practical games. And because it's so great and it's so helpful, I want to share it with you today. So here is the AB method to prevent blunders in your future games. And it's so simple, you're going to be able to use this right after watching the today's short video. After the opponent's move check attacks, before your move check blunders. And because the key words of these each phrase starts from either A or B, it's called the A-B method, but it's very easy to remember it that way. Now let's go to the chessboard and I'm going to show you how you can use this method in any kind of positions that you'll ever face. Now let me show you one really interesting opening. In this opening white plays pawn e4, pawn e5, so far all the very standard moves, and all of a sudden black plays pawn f5. A really cool opening that I discovered not long ago and I recorded a video about that. You may wish to check this out because it's a deadly opening weapon for black, really. Now, what do most of the white players play here? Well, they notice that by playing pawn f5, the pawn being attacked, so they think, okay, why not to grab this pawn f5? And that's what they do. Guess what's gonna happen next? After that, black responds with pawn e4, and all of a sudden white figures out that they are somewhat in trouble. Because the knight is attacked and all the squares where the knight could possibly go are already under the attack of the black pieces. And therefore the knight can't really go forward and moving it backwards to g1 just looks too passive and too bad. In fact, very often the white players lose this game just in 8 moves. <laughs> that's, that's really fine, I'm gonna show you in a moment. But prior to that, let me just show you here. Let's go back to this point, right after black play f5. Now, how should you think instead about this position or any other chess position? Right? So once your opponent played their move, in this case it was pawn to f5, the first question is after the opponent's move, check attacks. So after the opponent moves, you ask yourself, is there any attack? And in this case, indeed, the attack is the threat to your pawn e4, black is ready to grab it. So in this case, the attack is pretty obvious. That's good. You already can take notice of that, that you probably need to do something about that. But then there is also the next stage, the second stage and the second phase of this rule says that before playing your move you get a check for blunders so if you decide that okay i'm gonna take here before playing that move you gotta ask yourself are there any attacking moves that my opponent can play am i missing something and if white players ask themselves this question they would definitely notice that black has actually not just one move pawning four but even two great moves because the other option with that white overlooks just as well is the move pawn d5 that you know that would build up these beautiful pawns in the center for black, gain a temple by attacking the white bishop, open up the other bishop to attack this pawn f5, and it looks pretty good for black as well. So in fact, if we're coming back to this position, white just overlooked two strong attacking moves of black, either push e4 or push d5. Both moves are pretty strong, and white overlooks both of them because they don't follow the simple AB method that we're learning today. But after the today's video, no longer you will be uh, a threat to blunders. All right, so now before playing that move pawn takes a5, you get to check this quick, you get to make this quick blunder check so that then if you decided that okay, e takes a5, you know, blunder or something, then you'll just play some other move, right? You'll play, you know, pawn d3 or whatever, and you're good to go, right? Now let's instead see what happens to most of the players who are unfamiliar to this rule. Here's what happens in real games. In real games, why lightheartedly capture here on f5, black responds all of a sudden with pawn e4, here white realizes that there is nowhere to go for the knight and bringing it back to g1 just looks too passive, so they think to themselves, okay, let me trick black, let me play queen e2, pinning the pawn down to the king and the pawn can't move, but black plays queen e7, unpinning the pawn and renewing the threat to the knight, therefore white is finally forced to bring the knight all the way back to g1. That goes knight of 6 here white thinks, okay, anyway, I need to develop this knight somehow, so let's play pawn d3, trade off in the center, maybe I'll be able to even trade off the queens and simplify matters, but black responds with knight e4, attacking the queen, and once it goes somewhere, does it really matter? Black wins the game with a beautiful tactics, knight takes c2. 
fork to the white's king and queen uh, and rook and after the queen captures there is pawn takes d3 which is checked to the king and a discovered attack of the white's queen therefore white loses the queen and the game in just eight moves so that's how it goes for players who are unfamiliar to the a b method to prevent blunders now the next example is a pretty funny and controversial game played between uh, Zemish against uh, Capablanca, two of them obviously are very strong players of the past, Capablanca was a world champ, here at this point it was white to play, and white played bishop d3. So according to the AB method, the first question you ask yourself is, is there any attack here, right? And bishop d3 obviously is just a developing move, there is isn't, there is no attack here, she just brings the bishop up. Okay, now the next phase is just to decide which move you're gonna play, and before playing this, ask yourself, am I blundering anything? And Capablanca played a move which was called later the Blunder of the Year. But to Capablanca's excuse, there is also a story which I don't know for sure whether it's true or not, but maybe it is, because it's been also shared, uh, if I'm not mistaken, even by Gary Kasparov in his My Great Predecessor's book. So the story goes that Capablanca was actually not only a great chess player, but also a handsome man and a great womanizer. And at this moment where he was thinking about the position, he noticed that his wife, who apparently arrived from Cuba, their home country, entered the plane hall. And he was shocked because he had an affair with another beautiful blonde during this tournament. He was shocked and played the move bishop a6 immediately, which turns out to be a blunder, because after queen a4, white double attacks the minor pieces as well as puts the pin to the knight, so white just overwhelms black with a number of threats, and black in fact loses a piece here, and Capablanca could safely resign right here. Anyway, he decided to play on, so he played bishop b7, which doesn't help because white can take advantage of the pin by playing pawn d5, that I can't run away because of the pin, and therefore it's gonna be captured. Now, and initially I thought that, you know, maybe the whole story is just some rumors about Capablanca, maybe it's not true, but later I figured out that Capa blundered twice during this game, so let me show you the moment that happened a couple moves later. A couple moves later, in the, in the same game, they reached this position. White is still up a piece, therefore white is normally winning, but anyway, Capablanca is trying to fight, trying to complicate matters. But at this position, once again, he blundered. He played just, just a casual move, pawn h4, blundering that white has a nasty move, knight to d4. And that is extremely strong here, it threatens to go knight e6 with a double attack to the queen and the rook. Moreover, the queen will be just a trap there on c5 and black cannot really capture it because in this case after pawn recaptures you know the queen is trapped and is lost so black can take it or else the queen will be lost and if, if black doesn't take they're gonna be destroyed anyway now of course this kind of a blunder is a more complicated it's not that simple to see these tactics but you know it's complicated but not for the world champ and capablanca known for making the fewest blunders compared to almost anyone else uh of course, it's strange to see him blundering twice during the same game time. So uh, during the same game, so I don't know. Maybe the story is right, and maybe he was really shocked. Now let me show you another popular opening variation. Well, not very popular, but you you're welcome to use it. It's, it's a great opening weapon for white. Here's how it goes. White starts off with pawn e4. After pawn e5, you enter the bishop's opening, the opening that I've reached for so long, and many of you guys reported great successes with it. Now black responds with the most played move, knight of six, white may respond with knight of three, and actually not many players know that th that way you can get into the reverse Stafford Gambit, where in fact, after knight a6, e4, and knight c3, white gets the Stafford Gambit with the reverse Karler and with an extra tempo, which obviously should be very dangerous. Now, after black takes here on c3, white recaptures, opening up the game and opening up their pieces. And let's think about this position for a second. How would you play here if you are black? Now think about this for a few seconds. But don't just tell me the move, try to apply the AB method that we learned so far. Okay, now well, the first question is, after the opponent's move, you check for attacks. What are the attacking options of white here? And is there anything here? Well, apparently white is threatening to capture this pawn on e5. And probably black needs to do something about that. Okay, quite clear. That's why a lot of players here for black choose to defend their pawn on e5 with either knight or pawn. And they play one of these two moves, either knight to c6 or pawn to d6. But in fact, both of the moves fail, because in, in this case, in either of these cases, uh, black fails to perform that anti-blunder check that we talked about as a second stage of your anti-blunder thinking process. Because here is the second phase. Before playing the move you're going to play, let's say you decided that I'm gonna play pawn d6, I'm gonna play that move. Before playing that move on the board, you gotta ask yourself, am I blundering anything? Let me play that move out, 
and we'll see if there's anything White can do now. So before playing that move, you ask yourself, can White attack me somehow here? Can, can they call some damage for me? And you know what? You don't have to think about many options of White, because you only care about moves that can possibly damage your position somehow, that can capture something or attack something. And there aren't many options indeed, because you know, if White castles, you don't care, right? If they develop a piece, you don't care. You only need to care about attacking options. And if we're thinking about attacking options, maybe I can bring their bishop out, trying to, you know, attack the queen here, but that's not a big problem, because you can easily cover it, let's say, with bishop e7. Okay. If not bishop g5, is there anything else that white can play? Can white play forward somehow and attack something? And yes, indeed, they've got to move knight g5 here in this position. And knight g5 attacks the square f7, the pawn on f7 twice, and there is no sufficient defense. So again is going to capture it, perhaps with the knight, with the with then with, with a fork to your queen and rook, and basically black is lost already. Just by playing this single blunder, black is completely lost just within six moves, actually. <laughs> that's, all. that's really funny. And here's a quick test for you to figure out if you learned the rule. What if white doesn't play here knight g5? What if white castles here? So here's the question. Today we'll have an interesting puzzle because this will be the puzzle for you to train the anti-blunder method. So can black play here bishop g4? Is this a safe move for black to play or not? So please think about this. And if you can find this, the solution, the answer, please write it down in the comments below. Let me mention here that soon we're going to open up the next enrollment for one of my flagship courses, The Secrets of Strong Players. It contains the key differences between the stronger players and the rest so that it gives you the blueprint for improvement. If, and if you're interested, you may click the link below the video, join the waitlist so that we will inform you when the enrollment is available and then you'll make your decision whether to join the next cohort of students or not. Either way, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.